If you've ever wondered, how do I get started on a hobby? I've got some answers for you here. Hi everybody, and thanks for joining me. This is Fun to Know with Carol, and I'm Carol, here every Tuesday to help you connect with your curiosity. Today we're talking about some great advice to help you if you're wondering, how do I get started on a hobby? Specifically, mosaics and watercolor. Now, you've caught me at a time when I'm getting ready to go out and chat with a couple of friends, both of them have said they're not too excited about being on camera. However, they don't mind having some advice and their work shown. So we get to see and hear a lot of advice and see their beautiful work. These two women, by the way, are women whose work I have admired for a long time, but they're also people that I admire. They are actively involved in our community and they're just great people to know. I I think you're going to enjoy their advice as you hear it as well. Well, I don't know how I got started because I've always done something as a little kid, even I was hmm. crayons, and whatever clay, whatever I could get my hands on. Uh, but the ceramics part started, I would say, 10 years ago. And so the way I got started is I took a class. Uh, someone that I met who had a home st home studio took a class at her garage and just went crazy. <laughs> Came home, bought a kiln, had it wired into my garage, and just started working. Wow, that that's kind of commitment. Uh, big commitment. Yeah. But I was already really sold on it. Mm -hmm. But if you need a list of things, I would say that you need to have some understanding of the materials. Mm. If it's paint, if it's clay, if it's whatever it is. Clay is complicated in the sense that it's multi-sittings. It's not just make something you're done. It's got to dry, you got to fire it, it's got to glaze, you got to fire it. It takes a long time. So that's a bigger commitment. Mm -hmm. But in any case, you'd still need to know something about the material. And, and how would you advise learning that? Is that uh, take a class, class take in? a mm -hmm. class, and so you can ask questions. Okay. And then I also think people should set up a space in their house and leave it set up to work in. Uh, if you set it up here and then you got company coming, you got to put it away and maybe you're not going to get back to it. Mm -hmm. If it's drawing or painting or anything. So if you have a space set up uh, to work and leave it out, I suggest you get rid of your guest room. <laughs> and then also another idea is a, a design wall or a design book where you can collect pieces of newspaper, collect anything that you see that just sort of whatever, put it in a book, put it on your wall, for an example, and look at it uh -huh. and have it out where you could see it to inspire you maybe in shape or color or whatever. Sure. And then yeah. my motto is wabi-sabi, finding beauty and imperfection. So I don't think too much about it. Hmm. Kind of kills the magic if you overthink it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's just my theory. Okay. And that's how I work. You can see my work is definitely a little different. Yeah. Oh, it's just gorgeous. very different. And I and I love mosaicing found objects. That's my biggest thing. Ironing boards, toasters. I've mosaic typewriters. So this I can is fine. This is actually mosaics on top of that object. Right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And um, my mosaics, I make all my tiles first. I don't buy a tile, <clears throat> and I don't use broken dishes. You can but I, I like it uh, just flatter, mm -hmm. smaller, and then I can control the colors. So that's where the ceramic that's piece the, comes yeah, in. That's the ceramic part. But yeah. you can buy tile anywhere. You can use glass beads. You can use anything. I have a totem outside that I have. Um, had my tile guy cut all my cups in half, and I mosaic cups uh -huh. to a post. Huh. So I mean, it's whatever, you, I don't know. Yeah, I just wander around looking for something to mosaic. The joke around here is if you sit still very long, She's you're going to get mosaic. <laughs> oh, well, that's great. So that's all I know about that. Go to art galleries, oh. start talking to people. Okay. Because that's what I did. I went to open studios oh. and talked to Trisha Wrightheart, 
and she had such a charming English accent, sucked me right in. And she's a local artist? Uh-huh, okay. here in the Mesa. She's been doing this a long time. She is a natural teacher. Some mm. people are natural teachers and some people like artists are just artists. Mm -hmm. And their side gig is, hey, I think I'll go into teaching just to supplement my artist habit, right? Uh -huh. She is a natural teacher, she's uh -huh. wonderful. So uh -huh. she was inspirational, she was encouraging. I told her that I had no art experience other than third grade art, yeah. you know, being uh -huh. a teacher forever. Uh -huh. um, yeah, third grade art on the teaching, third on the graders. Teaching. Right, yeah. Okay. right, yeah. Okay. Not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last Be time I did art was probably third grade. Exactly, and that's when I think everybody kind of shuts down. They, I think everybody starts looking around like, I'm not good enough, or what are you doing? And they start to censor a little bit. Yeah. So that was my last chance to really get art in, I felt like. But anyway, mm -hmm. enough about me. Um, so yeah, she was just wonderful. She said, you don't need any art experience, you don't need any drawing experience. I will, you know, give you templates and and guide you step by step and just sign up if you're interested. And so I did. I mean, I took a leap of faith. So it's it's basically just doing it. It's meeting the right person at the right time. Like I said, if you're interested in art, go to studios, go to galleries, start talking to other people that might know artists. Mm -hmm. And she just sucked me in. Looking at her work, I thought this is something that appeals to me. I mean, she had a variety of landscapes and she had florals and she had architecture. She had portraits, she had everything. So wow. I knew something would speak to me because she had, she had so much to offer. Sure, yeah. sure. And how, how many classes have you taken from oh, her? Oh, I don't know, 20, 30. Oh, wow. <laughs> I've been doing it for five years now. Yeah. But I still consider myself a beginner. Mm -hmm. I don't have any natural ability, so I feel like I have to work extra hard. Mm -hmm. And I want her to kind of show me step by step. Now, mm -hmm. since then, I've taken classes from other artists. She is the best. Mm -hmm. She breaks it down step by step. Mm -hmm. You walk out with a finished piece of art. Mm -hmm. And there's a sense of accomplishment in that. A lot of people watching uh, don't live here. Right. So how would you go about finding someone? Oh, there are who... tons of online classes now. Oh, okay. Tons. Okay. So search YouTube. There are all kinds of free YouTube videos, how to you know, paint in watercolor, how to get started. So you could even start with those freebies to see if you were interested. Mm -hmm. The hard part, I think for some people, might be the financial uh, commitment of buying the correct materials. I mean, you can just go to you know any place and buy a little palette. Children, you know, mm -hmm. we we painted them all the time. Dollar ninety nine. You know, it used to be Save On, Thrifty. Yeah. Now it'd be Target probably, right? Right. right. Um, so you could start with that if you wanted to, but a lot of serious artists want you to use artist quality materials, and those are expensive. And you'd learn that from the teacher. Right, okay. right, right. They if would. they're a good teacher. But yeah. yeah, David Rogers is another favorite. He's he's become a very good teacher. He was an artist first and then has just slowly worked on his teaching craft and he's right up there. So he's another one that I would recommend, not to name drop or anything, but um, it's step by step. Again, you, you finish a piece of art with them and it just, it makes you feel like a sense of accomplishment. Sure. That's yeah. what worked for me. Well, it is, and it's beautiful. Well, some of them, <laughs> and then some of them you hide. <laughs> but um, but I keep everything, mm -hmm. and I keep them mm -hmm. by ear uh, so that I can kind of look back. I look at it more like it's just a learning experience. I'm, I'm not going to sell my art. Um, I'm, I'm doing this just to for me, mm -hmm. for my brain. And um, the better ones, I make small cards and I give them as presents. I send them to family members. I try to send a card a week to people. Oh. So I'm trying to spread joy in the world, bring back that whole communication of, of writing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, anyway, okay. that's my little story. That's wonderful, so that's, that's wonderful. That's wonderful what I would advice. recommend if you were getting started, just yeah, find people that have a similar interest in, and ask them about it and search YouTube and fingers crossed, plunge right in. Um, don't that's, be too, that's the key. It is, and don't be too hard on yourself. I hope Sandy and Marilee have given you some great ideas for starting a hobby and moving forward in it. Thanks for joining me, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.